Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is lesson 22, writing and evaluating expressions with exponents. Now we've added, we've subtracted, we've multiplied, we've divided, we've added and multiplied. Now we're doing exponents. Okay, example one, folding paper. Predict how many times you can fold a piece of paper in half. Okay, so write your prediction down. How many times do you think you can fold the paper in half? In other words, fold it in half, and then take that paper that's folded in half and fold it in half again. So then you're going to have quarters, and then in half again, and in half again, and half again. How many times do you think you can do that before you can't fold it anymore? Write your prediction on the line, and we'll come back. Okay, so I'm going to predict seven folds. So before any folding, zero fold, there's only one layer of paper. This is recorded in the first row of the table, right here. Fold your paper in half. Record the number of layers of paper that result. Continue as long as possible. So if you have number of paper layers that result is one, you have a flat piece of paper laying on your desk. There is one layer of paper. And the number of paper layers written as a power of two is two to the zero power. So this is the number of folds is the power. So if I have one fold, number of paper layers that result is two, okay? Because it's going to be two to the power of one. One fold, two to the first power is two. So if I continue this, and I come over here and I say two squared, well, two squared is four. So if I fold two piece of paper that's too thick, folding it will double it. Double of one is two. Doubling two gives you four, and so on. Doubling four should give you eight. And if I come over here and put two cubed, that is definitely eight. And double again would be 16. And two to the fourth is 16. Double again. And we get 32, which is two to the fifth power. And double that, and we get 64, which is two to the sixth power. And... 128 is 2 to the 7th power, and finally, 256 layers of paper if you can fold it eight times. Okay, I predicted we can only get 7 folds up. Let's just see what happens. Are you able to continue folding the paper indefinitely? Why or why not? Well, I'm going to say no. Once you reach a certain point, you can no longer fold. So I said, once you reach a certain point, you can no longer fold the paper because it would be like folding a paper book in half. Okay, these numbers start getting really thick, okay? So there's a ream of paper that you're going to put in the copy machine. There's 500 sheets of paper. Okay, can you fold that 500 sheets of paper in half? I don't know. That'd be nice. That'd be folding nine folds. So let's see, how could you use a calculator to find the next number in the series? Okay, you can multiply the number by two to find the number of layers after another fold. Multiply by two. Two times two is four, four times two is eight, and so on. That's what I was doing to the table. So when we continue, what is the relationship between the number of folds and the number of layers? Okay. As folds increase by one, layers increase by two. So as folds increase by one, layers increase by two. How is this relationship represented in exponential form? 
of the numerical expression. How is this relationship represented in the exponential form of the numerical expression? Okay, you could use two as a base and the number of folds as exponents. So that's what I'm going to put. Use two as your base and number of folds as your exponent. Okay. If you fold a paper F times, write an expression to show the number of layers. So if you fold it F times, it would be 2 to the power of So now it says, if the paper were to be cut instead of folded, the height of the stack would double at, at each successive stage, and it would be possible to continue. We have an expression that describes how many layers of paper result from 16 cuts. So the expression would be 2 to the power of 16. Then it says, evaluate this expression by writing it in standard form. So 2 to the 16th power equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Okay, so I've got my calculator. I plugged in 2 to the power of 16. I hit enter. 65,536. Okay. It grows really quick after a while. All right, example 2, bacterial infection. Bacteria are microscopic single-celled organisms that reproduce in a couple of different ways, one of which is called binary fission. In binary fission, a bacterium increases its size until it is large enough to split into two parts that are identical. These two grow until they are both large enough to split into two individual bacteria. This continues as long as growing conditions are favorable. So we start with our initial, and it's split into two. They both split. And now you see what's happening. Okay. So record the number of bacteria that result from each generation. So generation one, we had two bacteria. That's two to the first power. Number two, we got four bacteria because it's two squared and so forth. And this is going to be the same table as before. This is doubling. Two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, one hundred and twenty-eight, two hundred and fifty-six. 512, 1,024, 2,048, 4,096, um, let's see, 8,192, I think, yes, 8,192, multiply that by 2, and we get 16,384. And this would just be 2 to the 4th, 2 to the 5th, 2 to the 6th, 2 to the 7th, 2 to the 8th, and so on. Okay. So there it is. There's our table. How many generations would it take until there were over 1 million bacteria bees present? Okay. So we need to calculate 2 to some power is great equals or greater than, greater than or equal to 1 million is what we're going for here. Okay. Um, at this point, there is a way to do this, but this is, that would be algebra 2. So we're just going to use our calculator to do trial and error. So if I go over here and I say, well, we've already done 2 to the 14 and 16,000, and double that is 32, and double that 64, so it's got to be more than 16. So let's try 2 to the 17. See what happens? We're only at 131,000. So you double that, you're at 200. So I'm going to skip 18. I'm going to go 2 to the 19 and see what happens. Okay, now we're at 524,000. I double that, I'm at a million, so it's 2 to the 20. There it is. 2 to the 20th power equals 1,048,576.
that right. Yes. Okay. So it would be 20. Okay. Under the right growing conditions, many bacteria can reproduce every 15 minutes. Under these conditions, how long would it take for one bacterium to reproduce itself into more than one million bacteria? So if it reproduces every 15 minutes and we need it to reproduce 20 times, then it's 15 times 20, or 300 minutes, which equals 5 hours, since there are 60 minutes. Write an expression for how many bacteria would be present after G generations. The answer would be 2 to the power of G. Okay. Moving along. Example 3. Volume of rectangular solids. The box has a width W. It's right here. The height of the box is H. Right here. And it it is twice the width, so they said H equals 2W. So if W is 5, the height is 10. W is 6, the height is 12, and so on. The length of the box, L, is 3 times the width, so they said L equals 3W. So if W is 5, this is 15. This is 6, this is 18. Okay, so that means that the width, the height, and the length of the rectangular prism are in a ratio. Remember that from the beginning of the school year? Module 1. They're in a ratio of 1 to 2 to 3. For a rectangular solids like this, the volume is calculated by multiplying the length times the width times the height, and the formula is D equals L times W times H. So if L is 3W, and W is W, and H is 2W, we're going to substitute in the W values, because I, if we're doing an algebra equation, we can only solve it if there is one unknown value. And right now I have three unknowns, L, W, and H. So if I get it all in terms of W, then I only have one variable. So it's 3W replace the L. W replace, doesn't replace W, it just stays there. And 2W, it's the H. So the H gets replaced by 2W. So now I have like terms that I can add, so, or multiply. 3W times W times 2W is 3 times 2 times W times W times W, rearranging the like terms, and 3 times 2 is 6, and W times W times W is W to the third power. So the volume of this is 6 times W cubed. So if W was 1, the volume would be 6. If W was 2, 2 cubed is 8, the volume would be 48, and so on and so on. So they have a table down below, and they want us to fill it in. So follow the above example to calculate the volume of these rectangular solids given the width by W. So the width W of 1, so what we're doing is we're saying B equals 6 times 1 cubed. D equals 6 times 1, because 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. So the volume is 6. Then we're going to do B equals 6 times... 2 cubed. The volume is 6 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 6 times 8 is 48. Okay. I keep doing this. I'll come over here. V equals 6 times 3 cubed. V equals 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. 6 times 27. 7 times 6 is 42, carry the 4, 6 times 2 is 12, 4 is 16, we're up to 162. Okay, moving along, B equals 6 times 4 per cube, so the volume equals 6 times 4 cubed is 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64, and 64 times 4 is 24 carry the 4, 6 times 6 is 36, plus 2 is 38. So we have 384 cubic centimeters if the W plus 4. So we are growing really fast here. We added 42, but then it more than doubled, and then it more than doubled again. Did it triple? No. 6 times 3 is 18, not 48. So what's happening here is... 
we're taking 1 times 2 times 3 here. We're taking 2 times 4 times 6, 3 times 6 times 9, 4 times 8 times 12. So what we're doing is we're taking W centimeters times 2W centimeters times 3W centimeters and that is going to equal 6W cubed centimeters. Okay. Alright, that's the end of lesson 22. Go do your problems. Next.